Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. Let me ask you a quick question. Have you ever had to have a challenging conversation with someone that maybe was a difficult personality? Have you ever had to have an important conversation, but you didn't know how to start it? Or maybe you were afraid to start the conversation because of the personality of the person you had to have the conversation with. Maybe you've experienced a situation where you were having the conversation that had to be had, but it didn't go so well. How do you do the follow-up in that situation? All of these things are what we're going to talk about today. I have a special guest expert with us on relationships and communication, and we're going to talk about the relationship protocol slash communication protocol and how you can hone in on your communication skills to be able to have these difficult, challenging conversations with even difficult, challenging people. So this is what we're going to dive into today. And I think it's going to be really, really enlightening because let's face it, as entrepreneurs or even in corporate, we have to have challenging conversations. Even a sales call can be challenging. Our perception can really alter the outcomes of an interaction or or conversation. So that's what we're diving into today. So I hope that you will stay till the very end because there are going to be so many gold nuggets here that you can take away and really implement in your life and business going forward so that conversations get easier and less complicated. So without further ado, Deborah Roberts, welcome to the Robin Graham show. Thank you, Robin. Happy to be here. I'm happy to have you. I am, as we were talking before we started recording, I'm excited to have the conversation because I think there are so many of us who struggle with difficult conversations. And for those of us who are anxious anyway, a challenging conversation can be so intimidating. And, you know, we can have a a physical reaction to the thought of having to have this conversation for weeks in advance. And then we're often thrown completely off balance when we have to have these difficult conversations just out of the blue or suddenly without a lot of warning. So this is going to be so great. But before we dive in, will you please tell the listeners a little bit about you and how you got to this point in your journey to help other people be able to develop these incredible communication and relationship skills? Absolutely. Um, First of all, so happy to be here. And I love the introduction because it is so true that so many people are, most of us really, hesitate to have important conversations. And we do think about it well in advance. And we perseverate about what am I going to say? What am I going to do? And I just want to let everybody know that there are simple ways of having these conversations and building up your confidence and preparing and We'll get, we can get to all that um, and ease, ease everybody's mind. Um, so I am Deborah Roberts. I call myself a conversation expert. My background is I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I'm also a trauma consultant and a business consultant. And I've been working in all of those industries for decades. And what happened was what I learned as a combination of experiences, having been in the trenches in nonprofit organizations and working in all sorts of settings, is that when you have a system for teaching people how to communicate and how to express themselves, regardless of the setting, whether you're sitting with your partner in business or in life, if you know how to say what you wanna say and resolve conflicts and feel equipped, it changes the quality of your life, of your interactions, of your organization. And so that's how it started to happen. I realized that what I'd been teaching one-on-one with clients or with organizations was something that more people needed to learn about. I thought everybody was doing what I was doing because it came so naturally to me and it's so practical and logical, Um, but ultimately they weren't. So um, here I am uh, teaching it. And my goal is to make the world a more communicative and peaceful place where we can even talk about our differences. So- Oh, and isn't that like one of the most necessary things, especially in the state of the world today? I, I'm just thinking in the United States and how pe- you can't have certain conversations with certain people because they just go 
so off the deep end about, you know, their viewpoints and they're not willing to be open to other people's viewpoints. And I think it's so critical that we get curious and stop judging and really have these important challenging conversations so that we can help the generations to come. Otherwise we're going to be at a roadblock. Yes. And to your point, I, I think it's important to know when you're talking to someone, when, when they're open to hearing what you have to say and when they're not, Yes. when they're not, don't push your point. Yeah. It's as simple as that. And that's a lot of the, the kinds of things that I talk about, of about learning how to read a situation, how to approach people. And if you're not getting anything back, I call that that they're turned away. Mm-hmm. And when they're really fully turned away and they're invested in their negativity, you got nothing. You know, you can be as curious, as interested, as um, well-spoken. And if they're not interested, you have to find another way either to get around that or figure out how to deal with it. Because you, you know, it's knocking on a, you're knocking on a door and no one's going to answer. So yeah. that, that's an extreme. Just so let's talk about that. Let's <laughs> talk about that for just a second. Like if sure. someone is having one of these conversations, how do you, how do you discern that that's the reaction this person is having, that this person has a wall built up and they're not willing to go there. They're not willing to have these conversations with you. Um, how, are there signs that you can perceive from someone I think if you know how to communicate and you prepare for the conversation and you express yourself in a way that's open-minded, curious, respectful, and you get nothing back, either they lash out at you or they're tuning out, they're distracted, uninterested, what you do is you comment on what you're experiencing in a nice way. You stay respectful. You know, you don't go low. You stay respectful and because that's how you'll get the best gauge and you comment on what you observe if, if it's appropriate. You know, if it's a person who's in a position of authority, you might not fully say this, but you can say to someone, I'm trying to have a serious conversation. I, I feel like you're distracted. Is this not a good time to talk about it? Or I'm not sure why you're upset. I mean, you know, then it's about also resolving a conflict if the way that they come back at you is in a negative way. But in general, you know, when you're talking to someone and you've said something and they're not hearing you, and then you try another way and they're not hearing you. By the third time, I usually say, you know, I'm really trying to get a point across here. I don't think it's landing. What am I missing? Or help me understand what you hear me saying, because I don't feel like it's, you know, you're getting my messaging. And that's what's critical, that we can approach with curiosity as you know you and I mentioned earlier when we were talking that that's my mo i want to be more curious about why it's not landing rather than oh crap like i'm really ticking them off you know i want to be able to say wait a sec maybe what do you think i'm saying that's getting you so upset or pointing out what you're observing but it's coming from a place of curiosity not banging it over their head getting louder um you know I'm going to make my point. I'm going to be right. You're not hearing me. And so you keep repeating it and saying the same thing over or driving yourself crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about how to approach a challenging person or Mm -hmm. interaction. Okay. So I want you to think about your, you're going to have a conversation with someone who you see as challenging for whatever reason. And nobody's looking forward to that conversation. I'm not looking forward to that conversation. So that's a reality. And most people will avoid the conversation or they, you know, because they don't want to hurt. You're in the, I'm an avoider too, by the way. (laughs) I'll raise my hand right now. I'm a people pleaser and I don't want conflict. (laughs) I'll teach you how to do it, but I'd rather not. (laughs) So the, the main thing is that most people avoid conversations because they don't know how to start it. They don't know um, what to say once it's going, and they don't want to hurt the person's feelings if it's that type of a feedback conversation, or it might not go well. What do I do if it doesn't go well? So I on, actually, on my website, I, I forgot to even mention this. I have a, uh, on the relationshipprotocol.com, I have a, a download called Tell Me What to Say, and it's a good little thing for starting conversations. That's a side note. But um, how you approach a challenging person is all about your mindset. So I want you to give them the benefit of the doubt that they also want to have a good outcome. 
Because usually we go in assuming they're going to give us a hard time, assuming they don't want to talk to us, assuming we're right, they're wrong, they're difficult. We have a, a whole story built up in our head and you know, we sure ourselves up and we go in there. But what if instead you said to yourself, I'm going to go under the premise that they also want to get along with me. They want the team to work better. They want this company to perform at its best, whatever it is. Let's assume we're on the same page and take it from there. Let them prove you wrong. Maybe they don't really deserve the benefit of the doubt. Start by giving it to them anyway. You don't have to say it. It's more your mindset. You can say it, but I prefer at least for starters, you know, kind of that, I call it like that. It's just a small turn of the dial. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. We talk so much about mindset on the show. So that's an, another great um, conversation to loop into this. And listeners, I will put a hyperlink to a previous episode about mindset too. So that a couple mm -hmm. probably that you can go back and listen to as well, just so that you can work on that so that you can go into these situations with a positive Wonderful. mindset. Um, okay. So Deborah, with all that being said, then how do we, how do we prepare for an important conversation? So you kind of touched on that with the mindset piece, but are there other, like just maybe strategies or, or a list of things that we can say, okay, I have to have this really important conversation and I'm here's how I'm going to prepare. Yes, there are. Okay. So the first thing is think about who you're talking to. And, and I call that who's on the other side of the interaction, because if you're speaking to your child, or if you're speaking to your coworker or your manager, you might have a different approach. So it's important to think about who you're talking to. And also, how do you want them to feel during the conversation? Do you want them to know that you're serious? Do you want them to know that they matter to you? What, what is it? What objective do you have? So you just create this mindset, um, this perspective of how you want to approach, and then think about what do I want to accomplish? What are the takeaways that I want this person to have? Write it down from one to three takeaways, not much more than that, because most people can't absorb more. But even if it's one takeaway, I want them to know that if um, their the quality of their work doesn't improve, then we're going to be having a different conversation. But I also may want them to know that I don't feel like I've had a chance to express what's important to me. So maybe I want them to know what's important to me about the relationship, about my work, whatever it is. And I want to be able to talk first. So I also want to state my intentions for the conversation. I want to say to you, can we meet for, for a half hour? And I wanted to talk to you about X. Now you know why we're meeting. There's no anticipatory anxiety on your part about having the conversation with me. You're, you can come in prepared as well because I've given you the heads up. I want to talk to you about what we're doing about parenting when I have to go to work, what, whatever it is. It's the same conversation at home and at work. And so I state my intentions up front. I have my takeaways all set. And then I start with my benefit of the doubt framework of assuming that this person also wants to agree with me, not necessarily agree with me, but have a good outcome. And I can even say to you, listen, what I'd like to do is have a lot I want to say, or this is a hard conversation for me to have, or I'm nervous, or I just want to get this out. Can I speak first and you listen? And then when I'm finished, I promise I'll answer any questions that you have. Oh, I love that. I love that because I think we, especially as entrepreneurs, we we're taught to listen mm -hmm. and everybody talks about listening, but I think that's really a bold thing to embrace, to be able to ask, to speak first. And, you know, sometimes when you get the opportunity to speak first, it really does let all of that anxiety just kind of shed off of you. It does. And it, especially if you've prepared and I, I genuinely mean prepare if it's an important high stakes conversation, if the, the outcome scares you, if the person intimidates you, you, you want to sit up straight and you want to practice, throw your shoulders back, open your chest. I'm sure you talk about this in your mindset stuff as well. There's a way of a posture, you know, I don't remember what it's called, you know, the Wonder Woman pose or something like that, but you know, whatever it is. But, but the most important thing is to think about how you want to come across. And if I know what I'm going to say, it's like when you're giving a talk, if you know what you want to say and you prepare, 
say it out loud a few times, mm-hmm. rehearse until you feel comfortable, rehearse three times, 10 times until you feel comfortable. And that's the best way to start and prepare for an important conversation. Yeah. And I think, you know, this reminds me of a conversation that I had with, we had within my, the mastermind that I'm in with my coach, uh, just yesterday actually, and how like even going into a discovery call or a sales call or an introductory call, whatever that is to, if you are the the business owner and you want someone to purchase from you, maintain control of that conversation Mm -hmm. and not in a negative controlling way, but maintaining that control so that it can go the way that you have rehearsed that it will go. So yes, you're going to get curious. You're going to be open-minded and they're going to get a chance to speak, but you become the leader in the conversation. And I think that's so empowering. Yes. And I think even for a sales call to be able to say, I know we have uh, 15 minutes, we have 30 minutes together. Um, How about I start by telling you what's going on? And then I would love to hear what you have to say and then getting them to talk getting them to feel more comfortable with you, but knowing that you're sort of guiding them at each step of the way is really important. And so if you start by checking in on the time and checking in what what they need and how long they've been trying what they have been doing and why didn't that work and all those great questions that you're supposed to ask. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, and it all needs to be you being in charge. Yeah, exactly. And and it's so important to listen then too. So you mm-hmm. have the control, you ask the questions, but then you listen. So it all does come full circle. You have mm-hmm. to listen and have good listening skills. And, and validate. Listen, and validate and give them the attention they need and deserve yeah. from you. So, okay, I love all this. Um, All right, so then what do we do when one of those interactions is not going well? Okay, so if we're having a conversation and I notice that, you're getting upset, uh, you're distracted, or you clearly are um, responding in a way that I didn't expect at all. I don't keep talking. I stop talking. And it sometimes feels counterintuitive to do that because we're in it. <laughs> you know, we want to get a resolution or what's going on. And But if you take a breath and you take a step back and you say to yourself, okay, I have to comment on what's happening between me and this person because something just went kaflooey and I need to figure out what that is. But when I do that, I have to have the presence of mind to not get defensive when they tell me what's going on for them. And that's a key because we want to resolve the conflict. We don't want to turn it into, we don't want to create a conflict. So Mm -hmm. as soon as things start to get tense, you can diffuse it quickly. You can say, can you just tell me what happened? I did I say something that um, didn't sound good to you or what just happened if it's obvious or would you like to say something? It seems like you want to say something. Stop the action. Comment on what's going on between you. The energy might have changed. They rolled their eyes. Hey, why'd you roll your eyes? What did I say? And I don't have to say, why'd you roll your eyes? but what just happened? And I say it with curiosity and openness. And you may say to me, I don't like the way you spoke to me. I I don't agree with anything that you just said, or, you know, take a deep breath again and just say, okay, or or pause really. Okay. Tell me what it is that's bothering you and say to yourself, do not get defensive because as soon as you get defensive, that's how it starts to ramp up. Mm -hmm. So you listen and you validate what they're saying. And what that means is, and this is this is a critical part of so much of what I teach, is that how the other person feels, what their experience is, has to be important to you. So even if I think you're being too sensitive or I don't like what you said, it's your experience. So if I say to you, you are so freaking wrong, you know, you don't know what you're talking about, or you are a whatever. I just totally obliterated everything that you just said. And all it does is make you get tuned out to me and tuned off, or it gets you agitated, or, you know, it it doesn't make you happy and it doesn't make you feel heard or um, anything (laughs) to do with feeling like I care about you or that you matter, your feelings matter. And you may be wrong, by the way. Maybe I didn't say it at all the way you heard it, or I didn't mean it at all, or you're being sensitive, or your opinion is 
totally off base for whatever we're talking about. But I can't say to you, are you crazy? <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> Which we all do. But <clears throat> it just doesn't work. What I have to do is say, okay, I didn't mean it the way you heard it. That wasn't my intention. I, you, if you're comfortable saying, I'm sorry, you know, that wasn't what I intended to do, or I think we're having a misfire, let's start again. But as soon as I get defensive or I lash out back or I, I tell you you're wrong or I tune you out, um, the conversation has now gone from what could have been diffused and continued on the path to a conflict. And it starts to ratchet because you say something, then I say something, and now we're both ticked. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And because it makes total sense. And I think, I mean, even just with re in you know, personal relationships, this can happen. Oh, same so thing, by the way. You know, like, you know, when somebody doesn't take out the trash and they said they were going to take out the trash or, you know, whatever it is you're dealing with, whether it's your adult children, your teenagers or your spouse or, or partner, it, it can be really challenging and it can be so hard not to be defensive because yeah. we immediately want to defend ourselves and defend our yeah. actions and make excuses for ourselves. And I think this laying this groundwork for and making it a commitment to not be defensive yeah. can can really transform your relationships as a whole, whether it's at work or within yeah. your business or with your family and friends. I think, you know, a lot of times it's we just tend to close up in a ball and yeah avoid and then have hurt feelings and then distance yourself. So using these tools, we can stay active in relationships. We can continue to build relationships and have a, I guess, a solid foundation for those relationships so that going forward, we can make sure that our outcomes are positive versus negative. Because at the end of the day, we're not just creating outcomes for ourselves. You know, I talk so much about, you know, when we when we have the support and help we need, when women and even men, when we support each other, then we can create that domino effect of good in the world. But if yeah. we're not willing to have these conversations or we just sit in a place of avoidance and overthinking them and let our emotions get too, too escalated or too involved and become yeah. defensive, then we're not helping anybody. And we're definitely not creating that domino effect of good. Yes, <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you know, as we, as we build our personal brand too, I always have to bring personal branding into the, the conversation because it's, I'm so passionate about it, but you know, it's what other people think, say, and feel about us. So if you mm -hmm. really want to differentiate yourself as someone in your industry that cares about your people, who has yes. their best interest at heart, who wants to differentiate yourself as being unique because of X, Y, Z, honing in on these com these conversation and communication skills are going to help you really shine in your area of expertise as the per as the go-to person because you can communicate effectively and you're willing to listen but you're also willing to ask the questions that mm -hmm. bring out the needs of other people so oh deborah this has been fabulous um uh, do you have anything else you want to add before we close out well, what you just said sparked something um, for me as well. I think what's important um, to your point really is how do you want to come across? And if you add that to your prep of the conversation, how do I want to come across? You're thinking about your brand. You're thinking about your um, demeanor, what you're saying, how you're responding. And I don't mean in a paranoid way or a judgmental way. It's really all about showing up as your authentic self and letting the person get to know who you are. And if you haven't done anything wrong, you have no reason to be defensive. You just ask questions and respond in kind and stay that way. And, and, you, and you are staying true to your brand and true to yourself, which is as important or more important. So yes, <laughs> to all of that. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. So listeners, if you enjoyed our conversation today, will you please share it? I'm sure there's someone you know. And don't, don't, don't send it to somebody you're having conflict with because that would be an in-your-face moment. But <laughs> That was good. <laughs> but please share the episode with anyone that you know may be having some challenges or have a, a challenging conversation that is just around the corner that they need some additional support with. Maybe it's a client, friend, family member, whatever. Um, but 
absolutely share the episode with anyone who you know could use this information. And if you would be so kind to leave a rating and review, of course, my heart would be immensely full of joy. And I read every single one of them and appreciate every single kind word that you have, as well as your suggestions for additional topics. So reach out by a review or drop me an email at info at the robingraham.com. And Deborah, will you please tell the listeners how they can find you, connect with you, learn more from you? Sure. So my website is the relationship protocol.com. That's also uh, who I am on Instagram, although I haven't been as active there. I'm much more active on LinkedIn, Deborah D E B R A Roberts. And my program that uh, is effective communication for the workplace is called the communication protocol. So it's the communication protocol.com. If you're interested in learning more about the program, I'm happy to do a live demo for anyone that wants to see how transformative and unique and proprietary and wonderful this program is. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Deborah. I'm so grateful that you spent this time with us today. And I look forward to hearing from the listeners and how this impacts their viewpoints on all of these, you know, challenging yeah. conversations or challenging people that they have to have conversations with. So I will put the links to your website in the show notes. So listeners, you can always head to the show notes and access that easy as could be. So thanks for being here and I'll see y'all next week.